Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Praful Kulkarni, and I have Shreyas alongside me. And I welcome you all to yet another episode of the Candid Traders Podcast, Decluttered. And in this week's podcast, we have with us Yogeshwar Pal. And for the first time, we have someone who's anger to both I and Shreyas. So Yogeshwar will be the youngest yeah. guest to feature on this podcast as of now. We might get younger speakers further. but as of now yogeshwar would be the youngest guest on our podcast so yogeshwar is a full time trader after right after graduating from the college he started trading so we've got a lot of insight from yogeshwar especially when someone is starting up at such an young age so we might get a lot of insight from yogeshwar as to what problems one would face especially when you have to pull up the capital from the family and when you don't have the savings of your own and then you'll be trading others money in your initial day so how does it affect psychologically how do you have to you know ramp up your quantities how do you have to progress into the trading and what all the methodology that he adopted over the time so we have yogeshwar with us and i welcome you for this episode hello everyone thanks for having me stay in prefer it is our pleasure yogeshwar and you know first of all uh, just as praful said uh, at the age of 26 uh, it just shows you that in market age doesn't matter it's just about the time and experience and work that you put in and uh, really excited looking forward to everything that you have to add to the viewers of this podcast and uh, uh, why don't you start with telling us a little bit about yourself how you got your entire you know story around how you got into the markets and your journey so far and after that we'll have a lot of questions for you so uh, yeah i'm from tamil nadu and uh, i come from a small town which is not a small town yeah and uh, i i graduated from naval uh, graduated in naval architecture uh, from shakapatnam indian maritime university and i've been exposed to market since very young it's like my both my parents were my pa- father was a investor my mother was a trader so my first trade was when i was in 10th standard we in options it's like i traded stock options from my mother's account and uh, before that also i used to watch uh, how the market does how it uh, bear nifty bear bank nifty because my parents were watching so i was also watching so from college i joined naval architecture which i wasn't interested in everyone parents were joining uh, forcing us to join engineering that time so we were joining engineering as such and we were deciding our careers after that so same story with me so i also did the same but it gave me a lot of time to do stuff like central government college all you have is time in hostels so it, i used that time to do my research and uh, i got scholarship money in college also and i uh, used it to trade actually so from that itself i stayed traded like uh, first two years in my college i traded first year actually i did very well buying options like i was doing break even whole year which was very good considering i was a novice and i was buying options second year i blew out because i wasn't following the rules which i was following in my first year so i was fed up because my friends were like enjoying life i was you know what to say having my first blow out the hustle mode you know how the blow out feels uh, the hustle mode <laughs> uh, yeah uh, and i was like too depressed so i started enjoying my third and fourth year in college and i studies was easy basically engineering is was easy i felt like and i did i had good grades but i never sat for placements or something because i know i was going to be a trader in my second year itself so i was doing that and i told this to my parents my father had reservations he said he knew about trading he was a trader as well and family background was also a check so we had reservations but i was stubborn about again whatever you call it and he gave me money basically he thought i'd do it and go back to studying or try a job so he gave me like 1.5 lakhs it was in 2017 august and uh, i didn't go uh, i started selling options in stocks but i wasn't doing very well so 2017 was like 
very very slow market it had no premiums or anything so i i had to change that itself like i started buying futures and i got lucky basically whatever i bought it up and i doubled my money in a single month I like I bought India Bulls housing finance futures kept on going up. I doubled my money. I made one point five lakhs in a single trade. It's like uh, a good thing I did is I took that one point five lakhs. I bought Kotak Bank as investment because well, after that I never made money <laughs> uh, till two thousand eighteen March. I never made money and uh, some personal issues came up in family. So I thought of quitting trading at that point because. no but it could finance my losses also so i went back to preparing for cat then again i couldn't do it i hated exams so much so again i came back i had some capital left over like i had that cotton bank investment and one more lakh was so i thought i'll do trading only i'll try take my hands on for the say selling options again because in 2018 february january Big scheme up again. Uh, near twenty from thirteen twelve levels. So there's some issue with North Korea. It's part of and big big scheme up. I started my hands on selling bank Nifty options. It's like I always traded stock options only, but I had some leftover money which I I know some options will go to zero on expiry. So I sold them. I was making the, the collecting those pennies. I was like. Why don't I, why don't I do this? Collect those pennies instead of uh, trading a riskier stock option. So that way, trial and error, trial and error. I was doing well actually. In two point five lakhs, I was making two three k in a month. It's like I should scale up. I asked my mother money, more money. She couldn't give me. She pawned her jewels and not pawned. She mortgaged her jewels and gave me one more lakh, one or one point five. So I had four lakhs. and with that i again i started trading and uh, i was doing well again like doing well means i was not losing money that's doing well for me absolutely and that way i i was making money but it wasn't uh, you can't live off it right like like you are watching your friends make a salary of 30 or 40k they can live with it they can do something they are doing something meaningful so my sister also said the same and but I, this time i was having some confidence it's like i can do this i can do this but i think came october i remember an expiry where i lost 9% in a small capital 17 october 2018 that was the first expiry i lost in my life it's like it was a i lost 40k in over four lakh capital I thought I can control the market. I kept on rolling down calls, kept on rolling down puts. Nothing worked. Market gap up three hundred points, go three hundred points. It was so bad, and uh, that was eye opener. But again, till two thousand eighteen November, I was trading expiry only expiry trades. Nothing else. Only on expiry day I traded, and I was getting better at it. So at some point, I got more confidence. So we started a chit. Like uh, we pull our funds and uh, they give you out the money. Like monthly you have to pay twenty k, and so I took out like four lakhs from that. First month itself, I took out the money, and uh, I had to pay twenty k every month. So, but my capital went up to eight lakhs, and uh, I was doing only expiry. Nothing else. I was making one lakh per month suddenly from here. It it was two thousand eighteen November. And that was financial freedom according to me at that point, It's because one lakh I never imagined I would make it that easily or that quick or that soon. I was making twenty twenty k in every expiry. I had two point five x leverage that time also. So mm. yeah, at that point itself it kicked off, and uh, my parents were happy that I wasn't losing money. So I had the support of them. So again, I took one more check. I increased my capital to thirteen lakhs by that time, and uh, I was in compounding at that point also because there were expenses. I was keeping on paying the check, and uh, the other doing like I was living off this money also, so I couldn't compound. And uh, I was posting this on Twitter actually. My experience in the two thousand nineteen was a golden year. Basically, it has no rough rough 
period for me. It's like kept on went up. And uh, I met Jitendra sir in Twitter. He saw my trades. I used to post my trades on Mitesh Patel used to he, he used to put post his screenshots. I used to ask him doubts. So that way he used to clarify my doubts. Also, one more uh sir is Angad sir. He also used to post his screenshots. Angad Singh. There all, yeah. There also I used to ask doubts. And uh, the doubts were so like expiry traders doubts. Like, what will you do if this happens? Or uh, market falls, where is your stop loss? Like, basic questions. So, from there, I was asking the right questions. So, Jitendra sir saw me, he asked me, what are you doing? Because, uh, because I was making money consistently. So, from there, he, I told him what I'm doing. <laughs> he told me, manage money for me also. I'll give you five lakhs. Uh, I thought he was kidding because nobody gives money like that. He just met me on Twitter. Twitter. But he sent sent the money, sent not the money, he put put it in an account and he sent me an account ID and password. I was baffled. How can a guy do this? But thing was, I was not equipped to manage other people's money. So like I couldn't do expedit trading on mine and his. It's like I, I don't want to do it because I rely on my money for my living. So I don't want to lose concentration on both of us. So next time what he did, he took the flight and come, came to my home to see me for really checking what, what I do. He came to Trichy for a single day on a steady day. So he used to do it for one month. And he checked with me what I'm doing. He gave me an account for 40 lakhs. And I traded in that. It was a big account for me that time. So from there, our relationship grew. And uh, there were so many back and forth. But yeah, I, I started managing money from there only, bigger money. So 2019 went like that. I didn't, he asked me to come to Mumbai, but I didn't move also. And because I was making, I felt I was making ample money at that time. So why to move? But after a point, I felt my capital wasn't growing. I was just spending money. So I thought of moving and by 19 and COVID came. And I was panicking literally in December itself. Then the first news of COVID came in China. I literally panicked because my mama came from Singapore to Rome. I literally panicked. This guy might have COVID and he might spread. So I was <laughs> postponing my trip to Mumbai because of that. Uh, January, I, uh, I, I should have come by January 1st, but I came in February 15, 2020. 15, minutes, 15 days afterwards, we were in lockdown, I think. No, we, we were in March, mid, we were in lockdown. But yeah, I was panicking because of COVID, which helped me. I doubled my money in March 2020 by trading it. I was buying goods. So it was basically panicking at the right time made money for me. And I remember last week of March, it was one of the craziest weeks crush ever, March 2020. You sell any options, you make money. Any, whatever option you take and sell, you make, you make money. It was insane. There also, I actually bought option, made money. First off, second off, I sold option, made money. Both were working. It was like that. April was crazy. I was shorting the market. Market was going up. But I was shorting working calls, so I made I didn't lose anything. That's basically how 2020. 2020 afterwards, uh, it was smooth Mumbai. And 21 also was smooth. Now we are at 22. Basically, nice. I kept on scaling up from there. Now I'm at 2CR. You handle 2CR yeah. now? Uh, no, it's personal money is 2CR. Uh, I handle much more. Personal money in the sense, uh, your money or the chit fund's money? It's not chit funds, but it's basically my money. You are paid off everything. Okay. So how That's much? To, what's the total capital that you're handling right now? Uh, that I can't reveal. Okay. Because uh, it's not up to me to reveal. Okay. Got it. Got it. Absolutely. No. First of all, excellent. I mean, what a journey. I want to go over a couple of things. Firstly, like people uh, should notice how much and this is the same case for me and Praful as well the family support system that is there to say okay we will support you on this like it takes a lot of guts for any family to say we will uh, raise capital 
you know, even if like at least, let's say, um, you know, you already had a huge amount of capital that they could get. That's different. You had to raise it from a chit fund and then like, you know, do all that. And this is, that shows the kind of confidence also that your parents must have had because I know for a fact no Indian parent is just going to take money like that and give it to their uh, kid unless... No, it, was, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it took a lot of, what to say, make them believe also because they were tra- traders themselves. Like, mm-hmm. they have had a very bad experience with trading. So, okay. they were like, they saw me and they saw my expectations out of market, which was very different from, uh, what to say, normal... Outside people, uh, successful people, what he expects, a uh, successful person in market, he expects something out of market, which is very different from a uh, layman. A layman, what he expects from market is bizarre. So basically, he, you were so, expecting some sensible returns. You had a sensible approach. Yeah, they, uh, they, they saw it and they had a revelation. They saw it as a business for the first time. So that so that I gave the confidence to them that I could sustain them. Uh, my father never knew about options. He thought he is only like future trader. So future people, once they make money, they will stick to it. I made that money in that trade. They stick to it, stick to it. They do futures only. So, so their expectations will be very high. He, he basically, when he gave me the first 1.5, like he used to say, from this one, you have to grow. Which was bizarre because, yeah, 1.5 lakh, you can grow it, but not from where you started 10 lakhs. So it, it is a way tougher journey if you are starting at 1.5 lakhs. If you are starting at 10 lakhs, I prefer 20 lakhs at this point. Uh, from 10 lakhs, you can actually make some money or spend it somewhere. But 1.5 lakhs, you will make hardly 2k. Well, what will you do with it? It's like wasting your time. Absolutely. What I noticed is how he used Twitter to get himself few mentors by asking the right questions. I mean, I think you also agreed to this. You get a lot of comments, a lot of DMs from people and they ask all the lame questions. Sir, what is your strategy? Kya hai? Sir, you option selling or buying? Karte. Sir, you straddle or strangle? Karte. So, if you ask the right questions, Twitter is a great place to get mentors. Right? So, most of the questions, most of the comments that you get, you will be forced to ignore them just because those questions don't have any weight in them. Right? So, what I noticed is Yogeshwar asked the right questions and he was getting replies from people like Angad Singh and Mitesh Patel. Just because Uh, his questions were legit, his questions were, you know, they had weightage in them. So, one thing that I want to, you know, tell the people, tell the audience who are watching this is, Twitter is a great place to learn and I think Everyone is there to help each other. It's not like, ah, this is my strategy, I will tell someone, no, this is my... Nobody is like that. Because I know, the, I know for a fact that any mature trader, he knows that his, his strategy won't become, you know, obsolete or something just because like, you know, a lot of people start using it or something. So they'll be more than happy to teach their things. It's just that they'll be looking for... A good mentor looks for a good mentee. So if you ask the right question, definitely you'll get the reply. So... If you want to network, stop asking lame questions on Twitter. Stop commenting lame questions, lame things on Twitter, and ask the right questions. You will definitely get good responses from all nice people. So that's what I wanted to say. Most people congratulate her. What to say? Uh, say if you post a loss, they want to shame you. It's like that. But if you ask the right uh, market fell, you st- so sold a cattle. Whether you buy a put or whether you put a correct stop loss on your puts sold puts what is a correct way for that day to mm. trade mm. these were the kind of questions i was asking like those are legit questions to ask for a newbie because when i sold a put and market fell i was on a expiry day i always knew that i always had a doubt that to put the stop loss mm. or to sell as a credit as a newbie so these were some of the questions i kept on asking so yeah they they, they were forced to answer because these were questions if you are a, what to say, as a practitioner, they also had the same doubt when they started. So yeah. they answered also, it's uh, that way I was also like, key they answered. Okay. First of all, superb uh, build up like Yogeshwar with respect to how it happened. And, you know, to a lot of people who are new to the market, that's the kind of story that, you know, they, they want to play out as well. Something I want to point out here is that, 
clearly when you know what you're doing when you're able to convince people be it your parents or be it in this case you spoke about jitender sir coming and you were shocked that he was willing to give you 40 lakh rupees to trade with it just shows that if you know what you're doing there is no dearth of money people will give you money uh, there is no lack of people who say okay you know what you're doing it clearly shows i'm convinced that you will be able to make money here you don't have money i will give you money there's no limitation uh there are a lot of people with money sitting around they don't know what to do with it and the reason they don't um you know use it themselves to try and generate a return is because they don't have the confidence in them themselves but they have confidence in someone whose performance they can see and that's why capital in markets is not difficult to access if you know what you do if you put in enough work and you're able to show that work to people and it's so easy now with social media to reach out to different people and say you know what i have this uh, particular thing that i want to run and it's not like i have many people who reach out to me they back test a strategy they po- send me the results and say exactly. party bro i have this uh, strategy <laughs> we can run it look at the results it's so good that is not going to help man tell me you, about that you, yes. <laughs> seriously right you put in you put in work you put in whatever money you can use it over time trade for a year two years three years come back and say look this is how i have performed i've actually executed this trade this is what i run there are people who will give you money Exactly. like right now yeah. i mean social media is one place secondly there are events right so yesterday there was a event uh, um, where there were multiple traders and held by a broking firm and um, right now there is uh, again traders carnival which is going on in goa what do you think these events are for these events are not just for people who come and like speak about strategies and stuff it's for networking so somebody goes there and say you know what this is the strategy i'm running this is all the data there are people who will be happy to give you money in fact that's what traders carnival majority of the audience what they're doing there right the people who have gone they're like okay i need to scout for people to whom i can give my money exactly right and and they can they can this thing so that fallacy also is you know what i'm very smart i know what i'm doing i'm an excellent trader but i don't have money that's why i can't make is a stupid fallacy be it your parents or be it outsider your, your family or outsiders they'll only give you money if they think you have some idea of what you're doing and a good idea obviously so exactly and yeah. another thing is if you want to approach an investor for money first make sure that you have the skin in the game don't just back test some strategy by writing some code or some platform and then show the results hey i have come out with a new strategy bro you have just iterated something you don't actually have the skin in the game yeah. so if you put your own money be it as small as possible and then show okay this is my capital i grew it so and so by taking these much, this much risk my drawdown is so and so look at this i ha- i actually have the skin in the game and i'm capable of handling the real money so that makes the difference and as you said shreyas there are a lot of people who approach i know you i uh, i know that i know for a fact that they approach you they approach me also people like they are who are college students they are like sir maine ye 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 back test kiya hai aise aise adjust karna hai ye karna hai can you give me your money like bro first raise your money from your parents if they can't trust you with a minimum amount of capital what makes you think that a stranger will trust you have skin in the game to a certain extent and then come back after result as you said trade for 1 year 2 year 3 years so that patience is required right you can't expect okay maine 15 din trade kiya 15 din mein is trade workout ho gaya and you expect that okay the investors will come you know in queue handing their checks to me that's not going to happen like you, you should be patient also and you should be diligent and at the same time you should have skin in the game so most people what they do they don't want to go through that initial phase of forward testing on themselves exactly they have the back test but they don't want the initial small capital forward testing for themselves they want to suddenly start at making one lakh a day hmm. immediately I, i want that point where i want to make one lakh in a day that that is also is not correct they are they always like think that that first uh, getting in what happened with me is I had a terrific 2019 but all along the year my thought process was i was getting lucky it felt mm-hmm. as if so, like i'm getting lucky i'm this is not skill nor uh, market is just providing me money by luck i always felt like that in every drawdown i had that of whatever happened till this time it's, i got lucky now i have no skill every drawdown felt like that but only after like uh, four or five drawdowns and i came up from the drawdown did i feel like 
I, I felt like I have some confidence in myself. It's like each drawdown makes a drop later. Like money, what you make, money doesn't make you confident. From each drawdown and how much drawdown it is, and from there, if you come up, it feels more better. Like, ah, oh, we made money, not by luck. We made by our skill only. Like drawdown defines you as a trader. Like how you manage the phase of drawdowns, how you are psychologically there. and uh, how you handle it that's for defense your strategy in my opinion absolutely because you you know at some point at least for some period of time you feel like okay do i really know what i'm doing and this question invariably comes up when uh, sometimes when you are making money also this question comes up sometimes when you take a loss right maybe one particular day you take a loss you feel like do i really know what i'm doing like it that <laughs> yeah. question in some form will come and then when you see that you know i've overcome this uh, the kind of confidence boost it gives you is is unparalleled because you're like i i I've, i've reached new equity high i exactly. i've overcome this right and one more point i wanted to come back to what you guys you were talking about expectation like be it you, you or profil or be now you have friends who graduated from college and they're earning x amount per year let's say uh, if you graduated from an engineering college it's been about 5 years people be earning between let's say at least uh, 10 to 15 ctc we can, we can think right now to earn 10 to 15 ctc uh, from the market you need to have a considerable capital i would say minimum you will have to have around the 50 lakh mark uh, and yesterday um, uh, in mitesh's talk also he was he was talking about this previously i said without 10 lakhs don't even come he's saying without like if you really want to make a career about it if you have 10 lakhs what will you do with it even if you generate 30 lakhs uh, th- uh, 35% uh, return it'll be 3.5 lakhs that's nothing you all your friends are yeah. making more and you're putting in like all this effort and breaking your head it's just it's mentally devastating to like uh, drawdown periods will like kill you Exactly. It's not right. even worth trading and making three point five lakh. And especially if you're taking money, it. and especially if you're taking money from your trading account to live. Correct. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, there are phases where you'll be crying. You can't face your relatives. You can't face your family. It's like it feels like you lost your life. Those period, it's not worth doing it for three point five lakhs. Correct. And yeah. and and the thing is, I mean, on 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 top of that, just to add, see, basically at the end of the day, um, you need to feel that okay, I I this whole thing is worth it, and for that you have yeah. to bring the capital. And if your capital is low, and you're like, okay, with ten lakhs, I'm going to try to still make ten lakhs or fifteen lakhs, then you're aiming for a hundred one fifty percent return. You're going to take stupid kinds of risks. You're going to yes. take all kinds of tail risk, and that is going to end badly at some point of time. Now, if if you're trying to, I mean, if you target lower and you earn higher great but if you're targeting itself this year i want to triple my capital then you're on a different kind of path itself right yeah yeah that's what most people look at markets for 100% return minimum uh, people who have who are actually traders successful traders or investors their their lookout is for 20 25% max exactly anything above they're very happy actually so yeah. on a, as the capital gets larger you want smaller returns you don't want higher returns higher returns is in, inherently higher returns means your capital is at risk nobody wants that so most people layman they don't get it actually they see it as a place where after bitcoin is some something else places mm-hmm. it's like most people are like well, you are making only this much and like i'm happy with that layman <laughs> <laughs> should have invested in bitcoin bitcoin is like killing young generation here yeah so i want to go to the next part here so yogeshwar you now work at a, a prop desk in a situation where you have multiple traders in the room and um, i mean i've never been in such environment neither has praful so we're very um, you know isolated. we have no idea what isolated to how that feels and you know because i've always wondered how will somebody else's opinion uh, interfere with your opinion and uh, you will it give help or will it actually do the opposite so can you walk us through a little bit about how that whole system functions that environment uh, how it is it is fun to work with other people but uh, the thing is uh, we can't say i'm actually at a prop desk we are just a team but uh, they are all so systematic it's like their system straight ups 
and i am i'm the only discretionary guy out there so it feels still i feel alone there <laughs> it's like i'll be checking on different trades they are all intraday traders and uh, only yogeshwar carries positions they are all intraday traders and yeah sometimes market gets directional that's when everybody poop up it's like it has to stay in this direction then only we will make money when that situation comes that's when it feels like when i lose money and they also lose money uh, someone is with us <laughs> that By the way, is something <laughs> Yogeshwar, you said that all others in your room are systematic traders, and you are the only discretionary trader, right? So when you have a majority of the people doing something, so has it rubbed off on you? Have you got influenced? Have you at one point thought that okay, my, I I should at least think about you know quitting discretionary trading and you know converting myself into system trader? Has that thought ever crossed your mind? Consider putting money on systems. But mm-hmm. I never consider quitting as a discretionary trader because uh, uh, quitting. I think quitting trade. is a quitting is a too strong a word. So I would say just you know changing yourself as a because I know a lot of people who change themselves from discretionary trading and completely you know became system traders. To be brutally honest, um, I trade because I like the high. so i am never considered quitting trading quitting discretionary trading uh, and i can i can i point. can relate to that because see, i run the algorithms parallelly i have the algorithms running and yet i my personal money i trade discretionary because you know once That's you trade discretionary only by trading discretionary you can form your systems that so that's what i believe you, in you you can get new ideas exactly yeah you, you'll be always like what happens uh say i sell a straddle and what happens after x point move i buy it Correct. try to hedge it instead of cutting my that's it it comes from discretionary because i used to do it correct correct so we form a system based out of it you get a lot of new ideas based on yeah because i know a lot of people who backtest right backtest gives you point a and point b it doesn't show you the journey between point a to point b you you don't know what's the mtm lows what's the mtm highs what would have happened if you had booked at the mtm highs when that mtm high happened that will only come from the screen time and yeah. you can only yeah. able to give the screen time if you're discretionary trading yes and uh, even fully if i am systematic fully even i'll take part of my capital trade on <laughs> compulsive trade <laughs> it's like i want to trade passion. i don't want to do it yeah i am like a whatever trade. you like do give me full free time if the market is open i'm trading i'm that, like that kind of thing it's like i want to trade i love it <laughs> that's thing today just i read a tweet which says that um once the work becomes non transactional you have already retired That's so you're trading for the high yeah but when you love something a lot you never want to retire so exactly. that's his point exactly ah uh, so yeah so here's what i want to uh, get to yogeshwar so you have all these people and because you're a discretionary trader you always form a view right you form mm-hmm. a view and then you execute a trade that, uh, like and let's say the systems uh, that your uh, colleagues are running they're generating signals do you does that interfere with you because i felt this um sometime back when i was sitting and trading with a few other people i've not done it very often but when they uh, were expressing their view i felt like i was getting disturbed because for me i've always felt my wrong view is better than sitting with multiple people and getting a right view out of it because execution becomes a problem i'm always questioning myself while yeah. placing the trade uh, should i be doing this or not so can, can you get into that nitty gritty it invariably thing? happens but um, the systems are also designed such that it has lot of strategies so uh, sometimes it gets directional sometimes it's not directional so you can't actually monitor every signal that a system generates and it trades is too many so if i'm concentrating on that i'm never going to trade myself so yeah, it drops off obviously but i learn to protect myself from it. it you have to at some point so yeah it happens that's my answer it happens <laughs> but i like trading with those guys i'll do it anyway it's a small payoff nice absolutely 
I didn't like what Bondi does, but I what to say. I have the cushion of like I'll make profit there, so let me do something else there. I take such trades, and I also like what to say. I tablet do those trades and see my PNLs. I'm decently in green, so I never thought of stopping those also. So I I'll randomly take a stock and go long. I did this multiple times. I sell options on those stocks, and uh, yeah, it's making money. Why stop it? I'm like like kind of do me give me any product I'll trade. It's like that. Right. No, I mean, see, sometimes it's difficult to explain. And sometimes we ourselves will not comprehend completely how we came up with the feel of it. But intuition yeah. is a thing. Intuition yeah. is a thing, and gut feeling is a thing. You see, when you talk about back test. Uh, systematically um what are you trying to achieve the same thing right like whereas sometimes you are see either you need to understand if your intuition is good or bad like and over like time few it days back <laughs> few days back everyone was long on the system they were shouting uh, uh, this is going up this is going up every and they were trading the index fully they are making good money also they saw jitendra sir saw what i am trading i was trading tata steel It was like, why are you trading Tata Steel? I felt like it's going up. It was also going up for five x plus. It's going up. I'll trade that. I was selling like fifteen, twenty lots of uh, options in there. So like, it made money. I I'm like, I don't stick with some rules and trade. Like I won't trade only Nifty alone. Or I also buy options. I I have no what to say. Uh, like I'm comfortable buying options also. Like I feel like it's going to go up. Why only make thirty points? I make. I want to make three hundred points. I'll make it. It's like I feel like that. I'll do it. I'm confident because I'll first do a naked uh, buy, which is very easy to adjust. Whatever happens, if you have the capital. So if I'm going wrong, I I'll easily adjust or exit at a small loss since it's a buy. It's like I'm that kind of a trader. Like people always ask me, how do you trade? I can never explain. So this Jitendra sir also. Uh, Advised me to like make a video like Bandi. You can do it. And, like people will scold me <laughs> if they see the video. It's like I can't do it. It's like I'm chaotic. But I I, I totally it. understand uh, where you're coming from, Yogeshwar. And and clearly, it's very difficult to explain. And even when I thought of ways to generalize how you trade, you can't because it's called yeah. discretion for a reason. Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, you can sort of explain it, but then people will be like. You're no, not. No, there'll always be corner like, cases with discretion trading. There'll always be corner cases. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So I think one thing that becomes very evident here is that uh, while somebody might be saying it's my intuition, you have to understand that intuition comes from hundreds and thousands of hours of looking at the same damn thing. Because at the end of the day, analysis becomes better the more you have studied something, and there is no substitute, no matter what you do. For staring at the screen, staring at the chart, yeah. looking at how that thing behaves, uh, how it is going to roll, there is no excuse for. I mean, there's there's no alternative, right? So, Yogeshwar, I just would like to get like your bit in terms of uh, people who are coming in, and you're extremely young and doing so well at a young age. What would you like to um, tell those people who are, who want to like live your story, where you know you started off with basically. no capital and then were able to get to the stage so yeah because i know a lot of people who are just about to graduate who want to directly take up trading so first tell them is it possible if it's possible what are the kind of supports that they are looking for and what should be their approach i basically haven't worked any like a trader all my life so i'm totally dependent on it so i can't talk about how works Go work here because I've never had the experience. But people who are graduating, in my opinion, from my story, right now it's not worth trading or living of it. Because say you start with how much can your parents provide you? Like you are from a normal family background, say they give you five lakhs max or minimum. You can't live with it. Say. because as a trader if you want it as a full time job you have to first manage your expectations your expectation is should not be more than 5% that is i'm on the higher side and say and uh, for 5% of five lakhs is 25000 you are going to be disappointed so 
I'm not going to say go work, build up your capital. I also don't know the answer here, basically. But you need capital to enter. This is capital markets. Hmm. It's a barrier for everyone. Most people don't cross the barriers because of the capital requirements. In my opinion. Most people have good technical analysis. Uh, the execution path becomes difficult because of capital constraints. And they have... They have to go through this, what the cycle I went through, I felt, feel like, because you're going to be disappointed. You're going to have drawdowns. It's better it happens in small capital than big capital. So they have to slowly build the capital. Till then, if they they should be provided by something else, other income than trading till then. That's what I feel like, because for me, it's all about, I felt so insecure in my initial days because I was totally dependent on it. When I had a drawdown, it wasn't worth it at all. It was a nightmare, literally. So it's like, say I have a nine, nine lakh capital, I had a drawdown on it. My capital is also going down. And I have, I was thinking of this. So it was a nightmare, which I think nobody has to go through. It's not worth it for that one lakh you're going to make. Excellent. So with, de- with decent capital, one has to come in and uh, Graduating people, if they have the background, they can test it. But most people do not have the background. They have to do it the full cycle, the cycle. And you're also an investor, Yogeshwar. If I'm not wrong, you're you're also. Um, yeah, yeah. Invest. I always believed in investing. I also invest my trading profits. Okay. Uh, as I said in the start of the video, like first profit I fully invested, uh, which the lucky trade which I made. Fully invested from there. I keep on investing, but uh, I also don't like to pledge and trade them. It's like I do it on the other account that I never see it. Like right now, I don't see the account itself because I don't want to. Like I keep on investing them, leave it alone. I take like ten thousand here, twenty thousand here, like invest them, leave it. I never see it. So that's the only way I can sit through a crash. Otherwise, I'll set it up. It's so, like so your philosophy, myself. your philosophy is uh, set and forget, as far as investing yeah. is concerned. Just set yeah. and forget. Okay, excellent. It's like I do mostly on frontline stocks, very rarely on mid caps, and uh, mostly on ETFs. I stay with Nifty Bs or that. I don't want to see them only. If I see, I'll cut them. You know, like if I were open that account only in sixteen eight hundred, I would have cut everything. <laughs> This is called so, understanding your uh, behavioral, um, not, not, I would yeah, not yeah, like yeah. to say flaws, your behavioral uh, uh, aspects. Yeah, and then ha- as a trader, hacking. that is your job actually, understanding yourself. That's your job as a trader. So yeah. if I'm bad at it, I can't live off it. Absolutely. This is a psychological hack. Like the same thing that, that works for me also is, uh, so I have a portfolio, but it's pledged in zero. Da? So it doesn't show it. Uh, in the holdings, yeah. you have to go to the console and then you have to see there how much <laughs> you're making. It so on my trading term, it's not showing me that plays yeah. a big role. So I don't have yeah, to check yeah. it. It is not in my face that oh you your portfolio has moved up or down by this much. And I think one more thing advantage that traders have is since we're always booking, uh, let's say we're booking profits in trading, uh, that urge to book profits from investment is not there. It, it, does that make yeah. sense? Because- Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> yeah. I even set it in a, a separate broker, which charges me more for the trades. Hmm. It's not like flat 20 rupees. Each trade should cost me more so that I feel the pain. If I'm do my entry should be also, should be painful. It should be like small quantities, it should be bigger quantities so that I pay brokerage there. So, I cut all, so I, sh- I should feel the pain. So I never open that account on there, just leave it. So you're increasing like, the barrier for yourself. Yeah. Like that. That's a good way. Yeah. You know, I remember See, some of more... my smoker friends, you know, doing this, increase the barrier. Like weird, weird <laughs> ways of, you know, uh, preventing them from touching the cigarettes. And I, when you come into markets, such things, a lot of such things you have to do. To stop uh, USD INR trading, I like put a ban on everyone to watch USD INR. It's like I do such a lot of crazy things at office. 
it's like it's required someone talks about, you need to work uh, around yeah someone talks about usdi and not going up 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 it's going to be yogesh nanda sir says it's going to 84 immediately i'll be taking up questions there it's like i'm like i should know myself right? so i'll say sir please don't talk about it in fight at it i'm fine after that you tell me it's okay trading is such a place that there is no rules so you have to play yeah you have to make your own little play, playground and you know people might think uh, what exactly is the thing here but the summary is you have to really break yourself down and not lie to yourself this is who i am i have these problems yeah. i have these flaws uh, like uh, one thing for me is whenever i've taken like this has not happened in the recent um, two years or so whenever i've taken a mark to market stop loss which is my portfolio stop loss every re entry i've lost money every time there's no exception so i know that beyond a certain loss i can't digest i become desperate so that's a flaw so i have to cut it off so i mean sometimes now people will say oh, you know how come you don't feel like re entering i do i know that that's why i shut it down and i walk away so you have to yeah. hack <laughs> yeah you have to hack so it's like uh, in my initial days there was a huge like uh, nasim nicolas talab fan and it's like uh, people who understand them asking how come you're selling options if you're reading uh, it's like he can make money that way i feel i can make this way only so i'm selling options it's even though i respect everything he holds on to and most people who quote talab and fin fin they don't understand it you know he is also seller of options he just buys wings who plays directional quoting talab doesn't understand talab he doesn't play directional he sells volatility but sells the uh, buy the wings i can do only this i can understand only this i'm doing this it's my hack i will do it that's it i will do it properly yeah that's and yogeshwar to you told about you know uh, as traders one should thoroughly know about oneself and in this process you come across two things right your strengths and weaknesses but a lot of people i know they try to improve on their weakness instead of doubling down on their strengths so in trading you can get a really quick success if you just focus on your strengths and stick to the principles which work in favor of you instead of you know trying to change yourself or trying to increase your i mean convert your weaknesses into strengths instead of that just double down on your strengths you do much better yeah this is where converse uh, conventional society they, they teach always improve everywhere they exactly, teach it. Yeah. this is where this becomes a what to say it backfires in trading people Correct. like if you don't understand stock futures don't trade it like yeah reward is big but risk is also big you can't digest most people get don't get it but they keep on trading it say Correct. i'll get better on it nifty futures man they see a trader who makes money in nifty futures they also think they can make it it's like how can you make it he's good at it he spent so much time on it and they think they can make it sometimes making money consistently is compounding his money and buying options he does that they think he, he people think they can get the discipline he has which is not possible it's like you have to find what you are good at exactly and for example for example i could never be a trend follower i don't have the psychology to hold on to the winners for that long and it's my weakness mm-hmm. okay so i can improve on it or i can find my strength and double down on it yes yes correct no so i'd be much i'd be better off if i just focus on my strengths and double down on it rather than you know trying to find my weak spots and trying to improve on it okay in other aspects of life that works it's there okay if you're mm-hmm. lagging in certain skills you should definitely hone those skills and you should definitely but in term when it comes to trading it's the complete opposite totally yeah this this uh, you tell to people they don't they think like well, what you say anything negative people take it as you're discouraging them <laughs> it's like uh, i have people come to me they say can i trade i'm like why why do you want to trade it's very difficult they they think i'm discouraging them they they're not getting the point that it's very difficult to make it take make, make money from trading it's like you are making money it must be easy like i say kya hota hai yaar it's like saying to a doctor i can i be a doctor it's like no you can't be a doctor that's a process way really. i think that i don't know why people think when you're at a screen and you're so called 
printing money or whatever they think oh there must be something you just know and uh-huh. you do it off actually the only thing is you've stared at that screen for thousands of hours that's what you have that they it's don't like, uh, say uh, take your example like you are doing 20k quantity people don't understand we started with 100 or 50 first and saw exactly. the mtm fluctuations from that to 20k uh, you are a layman and you start with a 20k quantity you are going to panic the shit out that's what exactly is going to happen you you won't make one like you are going to blow your capital first that's what happens people straightly want that picture and Absolutely. this is what most people entering into markets also think like we can make it to that point very easily but before that there is going to be a lot of pain and that pain you must go through yourself in your own way so that you can stick to the process for a longer time consistently because if you are taking someone else's process you are going to just quit trading in your first draw that's what happens to 95% of the people now that rest 5% they know a process which they can stick to it all exactly it's been so nice talking to you yogeshwar so like fresh to get such a raw perspective and you know even you being so honest about you know how you have certain compulsions and very very straight about the whole thing and uh, yeah this was a lot of fun thank you so much for doing this yeah, yeah. it was fantastic it was yogeshwar fun talking to you no. yeah it yeah, was I, absolutely I, fantastic and uh, thanks for doing this and we look forward to having more conversations either through the podcast or offline and uh, I'll be very glad. Perfect. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you had a lot to take away. I think you know there are so many small nitty-gritties in this episode that uh, will will seem so like okay quite straightforward but there's a lot of depth to it because that has been the journey. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you know you guys are reading between the lines here because a lot of content on trading is very straight to the point matlab yahan pe enter karo yahan pe exit karo ye strategy lo but when you're listening to a person's journey try reading in between the lines so put yourself in his shoes and see whether you you would be able to you know handle the kind of drawdowns handle the kind of emotional roller coaster that he has gone through then you'd be much better off listening to a podcast if you start reading between the lines so i hope that uh, you got a lot of value from this podcast and thanks for listening we'll see you in the next episode bye bye thank you thank you for having me shreyas prasad